We are going to begin with data of vertical jump height. So here we have pre, here we have post, right? So we're assuming that these people under did four weeks of training, and here was a vertical jump at pre, here was a vertical jump at post. You will also note that we have um, their names here, and actually you don't even need this column. Um, and usually you would use um, numbers instead, but I'm just putting it here to help you orient yourself. Now, this is the data, but this isn't what you want to graph. What you really want to know is the average jump height pre and post. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put here, you can really put it anywhere, pre and post. <clears throat> and we're going to put, this is the easiest way to do it, equals average of, click and drag, press enter, and then equals the average of, click, oops, ah, it's okay, and drag, good. Okay, so if you take this little thing that we've made here, um, you can make a simple chart, pre, post, great. However, you should always have standard deviations with your means. So how do you go about that? I think the easiest way is to just make a second chart here. Equals standard deviation of pre. And equals standard dev, stdev of click and drag. And you can press enter to have either one. So there we go. Now, one thing we should talk about is significant figures here. We know inches tend to be measured to at least one more decimal place than I've put. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it here as well. And here as well. Not that it really matters much, but um, that'll be good. OK. I don't really need the series one, but in a future graph, which we'll do in a minute, um, I might. So next thing we're going to do is put in our standard deviation bars. Now what a lot of students will do is they'll click, they'll go up to chart format, they'll go to error bars, and then they'll say error bars are standard error. That's not how you do it. Okay? The numbers for standard error just come out of really nowhere. Um, it's just something that Excel makes up for you. What you really need to do, and standard deviation doesn't work either, it always puts the exact same number for standard deviation every single time. So click on those error bars, error bar options. And what you want to do is do custom. You're going to specify the value. And the value, I'm going to click and drag here. And then for a one, I'm going to click and drag here. Now be very careful. If you make a mistake and you accidentally click twice or something, you have to delete everything in here. Otherwise, you'll get a bunch of randomness. So OK. And there we have our actual real standard deviation bars, right? So these are based on the standard deviation that we calculated right here of these terms. Now, <clears throat> say we want to do something a little bit different. What if I add a column in here and I add in sex, right? So I'm going to decide whether Sam's a boy or girl later. So girl, girl, boy, girl, boy. Girl, 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 boy, um, boy, boy, boy. So we one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'll just make Sam a girl. Why not? So what if I actually want to look at this data from the perspective of gender or sex? Um, what I'm going to do is actually go to data, sort, and custom sort until I get everything organized by sex, right? And you have to have this clicked in order for that to work. Okay, so now I have all the boys and then I have all the girls. So what do I do? Okay, I need to redo my, my little table here. So I'm going to put this over here for now. And instead of just having pre and post, now I also need to have men and women, okay? So here, I'll take the equals a V E R A G E 
open parentheses, and I'm going to take the average of the men. So click pre and drag. Now I'll take the average of the women pre equals average of the women start here. So click and drag. Now we'll go to post equals average of, oops, again click and drag, and then finally equals average of, and for women, click and drag. Good. All right, so now we have those averages in there. I'm also going to want, again, to make my standard deviations for men and women. So, so oops, standard STDEV of, so if men pre, click and drag, standard deviation of women pre, click and drag, standard deviation of men post, click and drag, and standard deviation of women post, click and drag. Good. All right. And just to make this look neater, I'm also going to put the decimal places as they should be. Okay, so what do we do? Same thing as last time. We're going to select all of this, and we're going to put in a chart. All right, so now we have men and women, and here's pre and post. Now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, I don't want pre, pre, and post, post. I want to see men pre and post and women pre and post. That, to me, would be more interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. You could either change this chart around, which would take time, or you could click on the plot, right click, and go to select data. And all I'm going to do is hit switch row and column and press OK. There. Now, pre, post, pre, post. OK? So, now we need to put in the standard deviation bars. For this, we're going to have to do it one at a time. First, we'll click on pre and we're going to go to error bars, error bar options, custom, specify value. Remember that right now we're doing pre, so I'm going to click and drag there, and then we're going to press tab to get to the next window, click and drag there. Remember, you don't want to just start clicking and dragging the second time right away. You need to make sure that you've tabbed over or moved over to the next um, the negative error value. Press enter. And bam, we've got some error bars. Now let's do the same thing over here for post. Custom, specify value, click and drag, and tab, click and drag. Okay, and okay, there you go. Now you have an enemy. So now that you have your graph, you actually need to format it correctly, right? So if you put the correct headings here, then you'll get the correct headings um, on the graph, right? So you put them in here and you'll get them here. So say I wanted to say, okay, there were one, two, three, four, five, six men and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven women. So I could write n equals six and n equals seven. There you go. Now, we're going to make it 20. There we go. And Calibri, we have to change to Arial here. Sorry, I misspoke. Okay. So here we go. So some other formatting things that you can do. Oftentimes when you put a graph into a manuscript, you don't want to pay extra for color. So what you're going to do in that case is just pick two very simple shades of gray, black, or white. So we're going to go to Fill, under Format. Mm, I'm going to say this one will be gray, fill, with a black line around it. And this one will be a blackish, and I'll put a black line around it too. So there you go. And this black might be too black because um, because you can actually, there we go, you actually can't see the standard error bars. Okay, great. So we have that. Now we need to label our axes. You always have to label your axes. So here we're going to go to chart layout, 
and we're going to go to our axis titles. Now you'll often see people um, do rotated title, um, and it's pretty conventional. Um, but you know, it is a little bit easier to read if it is horizontal like this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do here that this is the vertical jump height, and I'm going to always include my units, which is what choose there. Now, when it's something simple like men and women, maybe you don't need to put sex in because it's kind of obvious, but just, you know, for the sake of that, we are going to put the title below the axis and it will say sex. Okay, men and women. Now, here's another thing to think about. Oftentimes people like to put in a chart title. But if you recall, the chart title actually should go in your text, right? It, you should not be putting it in through Excel. You should be putting it in in Microsoft Word or whatever word processing program you're using later. But there are some nice things that you can add to this. Um, there's, you know, a few options for legends. I like to um, personally have it um, overlap because then you can kind of move it to wherever it's convenient for you. But that's just, again, a personal preference. Um, I also, this is just preference too, but I like to fill this in with white. I just think it's easier to read that way. Um, actually, I just filled it in gray. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so the next thing um, about Charlio <clears throat> data labels. This is always a good idea. It's always a good idea to show what your actual values are. Um, and, it, you know, this is kind of preference, but for example, you can put it there. It's not a bad place to put it. And then people can see exactly what the numbers are without having to really interpret the graph. Just make sure when you bring it over to Microsoft Word or your word processing or to PowerPoint that you're careful to make sure that the font is large enough for someone to see. Again, at least 20, usually larger than that. Excel can help us to do some statistics. Um, for example, a t-test, if you have two means. So in this case, we have a t-test, and we're going to click first array compared to the second array. And I'm going to say two tails, and I'm going to say it's type 1. Now, how do you know what type it is? Well, here we have the different types paired two sample equal variance and two sample unequal variance. Right here we're paired, and in many of your analyses you'll be paired, so you're good to go. Because this is less than 0 0.05, then we can say it's significant. So on this chart, which again looks at this and this, we'll say, okay, let's show that there is a significance. There is a way to, there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'll just show you one of them. Say we go back and add data labels here. The standard, sorry, the standard um, way to indicate that something is higher than baseline is to put a number symbol in. Okay, I'm going to make this font much bigger so you can see. So a number signal. Um, however, if we went over here and we're looking at, for example, the difference between um, men post and women post or something like that, we would use different symbols like an asterisk. Now in ANOVA, sorry, in Excel, you can do something similar to ANOVA, which uh, depending on what tool packs you have added to Excel might allow you to analyze data like this, where you have two factors and you also have, you know, multiple outcomes or what have you. Um, but Excel can't do pairwise comparisons, and ANOVAs are pretty useless unless you look at the pairwise differences afterwards. So um, there's not much to show you for this. So if we have these two data sets, we don't necessarily want to know whether the average of height and the average of weight are different. Obviously, that makes no sense. Why would you try to do a t-test to look at height, right, versus weight? It doesn't make sense. You're not interested in that. Instead, you're interested in the relationship between the two. So instead of analyzing them this way, and in fact, we don't care about the averages at all, what we'll want to do instead is probably do something like a correlation, right? 
So we want to see how the behavior and change in height is affects, I shouldn't say affects because it's not causal, um, relates to the behavior and change in weight. Okay, so 0.7. Let's graph this. When you're graphing this type of data, the type of chart you want to use is a scatter plot. Okay, and here we see all of our data. And now what we can do here is add a trend line and it's often good to display the equation so you can see what the slope is and the R value, why not? And okay. All right, this is skewing the data quite significantly, but I just want us to be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, now what I'm gonna do here is show you that the R squared here is the same as the R squared here. So here we see intelligence and SAT scores. And let's take a look at the correlation here. Okay. You get a number, but what is really important for you to understand is that that number means nothing at all. All right, I'm gonna put the weight over here. Wait, wait. If you tell Excel to give you a line, it's gonna do it for you, right? So it's gonna put a line in there. It'll even give you an R squared, the whole kit and caboodle. But what's important for you to understand is that just because a line is there doesn't mean that you should at all trust that there's a relationship. This is just a blob, right? I mean, I made up these numbers and this here might be, um, you know, a little bit more of a trend than I meant to put in. But the point is that just because it gives you a relationship, you shouldn't assume, right, that that relationship is meaningful at all. Again, you wouldn't want to submit graphs like this. You would want to label all the axes, increase the font. You probably want to get rid of this because it's not meaningful. And you might want to um, decrease this axis or increase it to 30. But if you do so, remember you do have to make a note of it to draw people's attention to it so that they know um, that the axis is starting um, at a higher point 